lawsuits that are going on on uh, the matter of Calder suppression in Florida. I'll talk about that at the end of this uh, news conference. Um, so while there's limited amount of time that the senators have and limited amount of uh, witnesses they have, this is an important supplement to that because we brought together for this news conference the heads of five statewide organizations that are involved in voting rights and voter protection every day uh, in Florida. And I think that's an important addition and an important supplement. Uh, I, I also want to say that uh, I believe somewhere, maybe not in the room right now, yes, uh, we are also graced uh, with the presence of uh, a representative of one of the state's major election officials, Ian Central from Leon County, and three members of the Florida Legislature, uh, Representatives Reed, Thurston, and Randolph, are sure. here with us. Sure. Some in the uh, some of the room and Clark Reed. So thank you uh, very much for uh, uh, coming to this hearing and uh, this press conference and joining with us. Um, I, I think we all want to welcome the senators, however many there are, there will be at least two uh, that are, will be with us this afternoon. We want to welcome them to Florida, and we want to make sure that they know that Florida is the voter suppression, voter disfranchisement capital of the United States. Uh, welcome to Florida. Everybody, you know, this is Republican primary season. Everybody's focused on the primary. I don't think people know, and I don't think the media sufficiently appreciates or uh, reports to the public that there are more people who are locked out of the polling yes. in Florida yes. than the total number of people who have participated so far in the Iowa caucus, the New Hampshire primary, and the South Carolina primary. Yes. Right. More people blocked out in Florida than the total number of people that have voted in primary so far. This is a voting rights crisis that we have in Florida, yes, and, right. uh, yes. and it's very good that the senators are coming here to shine a spotlight on, uh, on what is going on in Florida. More than shine a spotlight, I'll talk about that at the end, there are important things that the federal government can do, and so it's more than just holding a hearing and shining a spotlight, and we'll get to that uh, in, a, in a second. So uh, with, with that, I want to begin introducing some of the heads of uh, civil rights, human rights, voting rights organizations that have joined us in, uh, this morning and have them make us a brief statement about the work of their organization and the concerns that they have about this. The, uh, the law that is being uh, under review at the hearing today had about 80 different provisions. It was a last minute massive change to our Florida voting laws. There are four that are still in contention in two different lawsuits, and we'll talk about that towards the end of the news conference as well. There's lawsuits going on in Washington, D.C., in the federal court, and in federal district court in the Northern District of Florida as well. There are four provisions. One provision deals with the um, shortening of the life of a petition signature on a citizen's petition to amend the Florida Constitution from four years to two years. It's our concern, basically, that if you shorten the life of a petition signature, uh, the only people who could possibly try to amend the Constitution are people that have huge financial resources. So this basically cuts the people out of being able to control and amend their own constitution. Mm -hmm. There are, uh, another provision is a provision that changes Florida law for decades that allowed people who move from one county to another county and who need to update their address to do so on election day at the polls. Uh, under this change now, they are able to do it, but they'll have to vote a provisional ballot. And on the last study, in the testimony that we provided, and I think the NAACP also provided to the uh, Department of Justice and to the uh, Senate panel on the last study in 2008, only 48.5% of provisional uh, ballots were counted. Uh, and there are a lot of reasons for that based on Florida law, based on the lack of, uh, of staffing that uh, supervisors of elections have all, all over the state. A third provision that we're dealing with 
is the, uh, that I'm sure you all know and many of the speakers will comment on, I'm not going to analyze or comment, I just want to list the, uh, the issues, is the elimination, the cutback on early voting days from 14 to 8, eliminating the first week of early voting and specifically prohibiting early voting on the Sunday before the Tuesday election uh, by all accounts and I'll let Odora and other uh, people talk about that. Perhaps the most important voting day for the African American community in Florida. Uh, and the fourth provision is one that really attempts to shut down uh, volunteer efforts to register new voters, particularly minority voters, uh, by imposing fines of up to $1,000 on new voter registration organizations, largely volunteer, that uh, turn in the new voter registration forms later than 48 hours. It used to be 10 days, now it's 48 hours. Those are the four provisions that are in court between the two different lawsuits that I'll talk about in a little bit more detail later and uh, that I presume will be uh, part of the hearing. But the last comment I want to make is that's not all. You have to see Florida as the capital of voter suppression and voter disfranchisement. And it's more than the law that the legislature passed last year. It is the system of voter disfranchisement that we have had uh, in steroids since the 1868 Constitution, when Florida legislators meeting in Constitutional Convention were scared out of their minds that black people who will be getting the vote might somehow take over or have influence in our state. So they had to uh, uh, create a program that disfranchised as many African Americans as possible. And let's give them credit. It's one of the few government programs that has worked uh, exact, exactly as it was intended to work. Uh, uh, the other element of voter, of voter disfranchisement is the fact that Florida is one of the most gerrymandered states in the country. So we can fight as hard as we can, all of us together, to try to protect the right to vote, but sometimes you can protect the right to vote and say congratulations, but we have succeeded in diluting your vote as much as possible, so it has minimal effect. So you have to put together lifetime disenfranchisement, gerrymandering, and what the legislature did last year all together we are clearly the voter suppression, voter disfranchisement capital of the United States. And with that, I want to introduce my good friend, 